Joining me now is Republican Senator from New Hampshire, Kelly Ayo. She is the member or a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Senator, it's nice to have you here this morning. As Thank we, you, Thomas. As we talk about this issue, do you think that bringing our troops home from Iraq is a failure of negotiation? And as you just heard from Rick Santorum, a sign that we've lost the war in Iraq? Well, I certainly hope that the president's decision works out for him, but I think it's very risky, and he's clearly ignored the advice of our commanders. General Austin, who's the top commander in Iraq, recommended 14 to 18,000 troops to secure our national security interests there. And we are going to be leaving thousands of civilian contractors there and asking them to perform inherently military functions. That's unprecedented, and it presents great risk for our personnel that are going to remain. But I'm most concerned that we're empowering Iran by this decision. I mean, they're dancing in the streets in Tehran over this decision, unfortunately. Uh, Senator, I want to play a clip. Uh, this is Secretary Clinton from this Sunday. Take a listen. It's equally important to remember that this deadline was set by the Bush administration. Uh, so it's been a bipartisan commitment, but it was on uh, President Obama's watch to show the leadership to be able uh, to fulfill that commitment. Doesn't that lock the, uh, the deadline in, so to speak, that it was well, under actually, President Bush? I, we've heard in the Armed Services Committee for months now that our, our commanders thought we needed to stay longer, that conditions warranted us staying longer to allow them to secure themselves, and so we didn't further power, empower Iran. So circumstances have certainly changed and warrant additional troops staying. And the bottom line is that the administration failed to close the deal on this, and it's very important that we do not allow Iran to uh, see control of Iraq to Iran and make sure that there's a stable democratic Iraq for our own national security interests. In fact, Secretary Panetta said that on a scale of 1 to 10 that our national security interests in Iraq were an 8 and Ash Carter said it was a 10 on a scale of 10. So we need to make sure that we do this right. Are you suggesting that we need to occupy Iraq indefinitely? No, that's not what I'm suggesting. They needed additional time so that they could stand up their, their own troops to secure their country. And we were talking about a contingency of, as uh, General Austin recommended, between 14 and 18,000 troops. So uh, most of our troops would have come home. But now, essentially, we're going to turn this over to a civilian army. It's unprecedented what our State Department is going to be asked to do there, just because the president wanted to say that he had withdrawn them before this election. And that's a real concern. Uh, you know, I hope that this works out for him for our sake, but I think it's putting great risk at, what, at the, all the sacrifices that we've made in Iraq. Uh, Senator, I want to talk to you about Libya. The cost of uh, our inclusion with what took place in Libya, $1.1 billion, uh, that in aid to the rebels who eventually took down Gaddafi. Democratic Congressman Peter Welch wants the president to demand reimbursement from Libya. Is that something you would agree with? Well, I think our top priority right now in Libya has to be making sure that those weapons are secured and they don't get into the wrong hands. And we need to be working with our NATO partners to ensure that there is a stable transition in Libya to a democratic government. And just like when uh, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, Kuwait, who is an oil-rich country, reimbursed us, I hope at some point that Libya will reimburse us. But our priority right now is to make sure that those weapons are secure and that we allow them to stand up a stable government that will allow them to be in a position to reimburse us. New Hampshire Senator Kelly Ayo, thank you for coming on today. I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for having me, Thomas.